Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Farmer Tie TV. Today, I'm going to demonstrate how I cut my anemones. While I don't always recommend cutting anemones, there are certain species that uh, handle it just fine. And at least for me, I'm familiar with the Colorado Sunburst, um, as well as the Lemon Drop. Uh, now this is the Reefwise Lemon Drop, the OG Coral Collection CC Lemon Drop. And nobody's seen one of those in a while so um, these lemon drops that I've collected from Reefwise that one of the nicer ones I've seen um, and here I am trying to dislodge it thought it'd go a little quicker than I was expecting and didn't realize it was stuck to two different uh, pieces in there as well as the uh, bottom of the basket so as I fumble through this on video at least I wanted to at least go over the basics of cutting um, it's not really a, an overly difficult thing um, not too much science to it um, fairly simple first thing of course dislodge the anemone and try to look like you're doing it with a little more finesse than uh, myself in this video but uh, hopefully you'll have one that's easily to dislodge and uh, Often that's probably the hardest step of this. Oh, there you go. Got it a little loose there. But um, anything like a credit card, any thin, flat, strong um, item that you can get underneath the foot of the anemone is ideal to kind of pop it off the bottom of the basket. Now, if it's actually on a live rock, well, good luck. <laughs> it's uh, very fun to dislodge them from the rock itself but uh, there are a lot of tricks some people use ice some people just slowly push their nail and kind of jab it up like what I'm doing right now um, here I go I'm gonna try to zoom in a little bit closer so you can see but if you can look real closely I'll get my fingernail flat on the rock and just kind of nudge it up uh, the hardest part is actually just the edge uh, once you get the edge and get rolling, the anemone starts letting go and you'll have more leverage and it kind of comes off a little bit easier. Kind of like pulling a band-aid pretty much, you know. Once you get that little first piece off, then uh, the rest kind of goes real quick. Um, now you see I couldn't feel like comfortable to continue on the other side, so I flipped it around. Uh, half of the foot's already exposed over here, so I figured the leverage would help me and, and get this guy off just a hair quicker. Um, and again, just gently kind of working it, working it, pushing it off, and slowly it just kind of, again, kind of rips right off just like Velcro. And there we go. We have a loose anemone. So here I am. Generally, I like to lay a towel down. Once you pull these anemones out of the water, they tend to expel all the water that's inside of their body cavity. So um, it's nice to have a towel there to kind of catch a lot of that. Uh, the downside a little bit is that they kind of sometimes stick to the towel a little bit, but uh, sometimes that's actually kind of useful. So here I am. I like to massage my anemones before I cut them. I'm just kidding. Um, I'm actually trying to move the tentacles out of the way. Kind of gives it a cleaner cut. Make sure I don't cut some of the tentacles as I go through. Um, so this way I'm just kind of pushing it out to the sides. And you can see some of the, uh, some of the uh, innards have popped out of his mouth a little bit. I kind of like to push that back in. I'm not sure if it really even makes a difference, but I like to push it back in and uh, at least have its uh, body parts in the right places before I go ahead and snip in there. Um, here's where I'll just kind of loosen it off the towel a little bit. Sometimes they like to stick. And looks like I found myself a nice little cutting point. Kind of push some of those in intestines back in and mouth parts or whatever unidentified stuff that's coming out of his mouth um, and kind of push those tentacles aside just one more time and here again I'm just using a simple pair of office scissors you know um, you'll laugh at the old scissors that I just threw away uh, they were pretty rusty and I was still using them for a while so uh, uh, do as I say not as I do don't use rusty scissors but uh, see I can just kind of line it up kind of go right down halfway point of the mouth and uh, you can see I brace my fingers on the other side to keep the anemone from sliding down the scissors. Um, and just make one quick clean cut. Uh, and see, I, the, the bucket's kind of off camera, but I'm putting in a little bucket with about two inches of water. Just kind of let them settle after I cut them. 
So here it is. These are actually the uh, lemon drops. What I was actually cutting a second ago in the video was a uh, Colorado sunburst. So these I've cut before the sunburst and they've been sitting there and healing pretty nicely and uh, you can see they're kind of inflated already. I like to kind of shake them off, rinse them off just a little bit and um, kind of place them back in. Um, what I didn't realize and a little tip for you guys, make sure you don't have a hole clownfish in the same basket or area as your anemones that are trying to heal so you can see them already they're starting to explore they want to see who the new additions are even though they actually came from this basket but um, they're always curious always checking things out and pretty soon they'll probably start whipping their tails at these things um, so I know in the video it doesn't show it but I actually put some barriers between just to keep them from uh, agitating too much while they settled um, but they'll grab on pretty quick. Uh, the foot will attach pretty quick. And uh, here you go. Here's the pictures of uh, the ones healed the next morning. As you can see, it's pretty nicely inflated. Uh, here's the CSPs that I cut. Uh, yeah, they're doing their little dance. They already got suction to the basket. So that's nice to see that happen so early after cutting. Um, so I just wanted to do a quick wrap up. Uh, basically, it's not rocket science. Just extract the anemone, take it out of the water, let it deflate. Push the tentacles aside, find that mouth, and line it up and go ahead and cut it right down the middle. Uh, I use scissors, some people use razors, some people use scalpels. Um, whatever method, just make sure it's a nice clean cut and you only have to do it once. Uh, cutting and recutting is not ideal uh, for the anemone. Uh, otherwise, give them time to heal, let them settle and let them stick, and then after that, uh, go ahead and turn the flow back on. I give it about a month or two is what I usually see for it to start to heal fully. And once that mouth is centered, uh, to me, that's uh, the anemone is good to go after that. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, again, uh, I'll be doing more additional videos like this, uh, instructional, so that uh, I can at least share my methods on how to do certain things. Uh, this one in particular is just how to cut an anemone. Hope it was helpful. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you guys next time.